Hello, my name is Daryl Resendez, Product Manager for Monitors here at ICANN, and welcome to this edition of ICANN's Tech Corner. Today I'm going to talk to you about the newest Saga monitor, the Saga SX7. So far the Saga line has been known for high brightness and this is going to be no exception, but I'll get into that a little later. Whenever you buy the Saga SX7, it comes included in this little hard case right here, already out of the box, airtight, watertight, super heavy duty. That's to show you how heavy duty this monitor is, it comes included in a heavy duty case. So I'm going to show you what comes included whenever you purchase the monitor. So I'll go ahead and open it up for you. And there is the Saga monitor, the SX7. So whenever you purchase this monitor, it comes already included with an IDX V-mount plate attached. Okay, so you get an official IDX battery plate for V-mount, but if you don't want to use the professional battery mount, you can also use the included dual L-series battery adapter plate. So what this basically does is it turns two L-series batteries into one V-mount, basically. So then you can use this, this battery plate on the IDX plate and get, get the monitor powered on. So you can choose. You can either decide you want to use a professional battery system or you can use a more affordable DV battery system as well. So we give you both options. So it comes included with those. You also get in the box a uh, P-TAP to Mini XLR, so you can also power the monitor via P-TAP if you want to you know, power it off the monitor. You don't want to put a heavy battery on the back of the monitor. You can use your P-TAP cable as well. Also comes with a USB stick that's loaded up with some 3D LUTs, and you can also use this later on if there's ever any firmware updates to the monitor. You can use this uh, USB drive as well. It also comes included with a screen protector as well as some hex keys. Uh, the reason it comes with hex keys, hex keys is actually really cool because it gives you a lot of uh, versatility, and I'll tell you why. So basically, whenever you buy the SX7 monitor, we designed this monitor to be super heavy duty. This thing is super heavy duty, 100% aluminum, and it also has Gorilla Glass in front, so it's super solid. So what you, what you can do with the hex keys is that you can remove this Gorilla Glass and just use the LCD panel bare. So then that gives you know, the customer the option if they, want, if they don't want the Gorilla Glass in front because for whatever, you know, the, the shooting conditions or whatever, giving you a little bit of glare you don't want, you can take off that Gorilla Glass and then just use the LCD screen as well, just without the, without the glass. So you can decide whether you want to forego the extra protection for you know, whatever the, the, the shooting situation demands. So, also, if you look here, it's HDMI and SDI, just like all the other Saga monitors. You get HDMI input and output, as well as SDI input and output. Um, has a mini XLR for power, for external power. And a hardware power switch here, so you're never you know, wasting any battery. So you can always just turn it off. Uh, it has one, two, three, four quarter 20 holes, so you can come up with various different ways of mounting this monitor however you need. Behind the battery plate though, you, do all, you also have a, a vase mount, so you can mount this in different ways as well. Whenever you remove this battery plate, there's a little compartment that you close up to, to hide any little uh, power cables that are sticking out to connect to the battery plate. So that's the physical aspects of the SX7. Once again, very durable, very solid piece of equipment here. So what I'll do now is put this back away into the hard case that it came in, and I'm going to show you a little bit about what the monitor is capable of software-wise, because it's actually one of our most advanced monitors to date. So what I'm going to do is move this over here, so I can go over a little bit of what this monitor is actually capable of. So we've actually filled this monitor with a lot of cool advanced features. Um, it has waveform, vector scope, RGB parade, has 3D LUT support, has HDR preview, as well as all the basic stuff that a lot of, or most of our ICANN monitors already support, like false color, peaking, uh, zebra, uh, histogram, all that stuff. All that is in this monitor already. So what's cool about this monitor, the main feature of this monitor is that it's 2,000 nits of brightness. So whenever you're outside, you can be in the Sahara Desert, and then this thing, you can, you can see it clearly. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how to navigate the menu so you can see a little bit also all the features that are available on this monitor. So you get all the standard features that a lot of the ICANN monitor has, 
but I'm gonna go into a little bit of the things that make it a little bit more uh, unique in the ICANN line of monitors. So it has, it has 3D LUTs. So it has 3D LUTs that are loaded onto a USB stick. They come included in the monitor. You can load up your own ones, download them off the internet, the ones you create. It takes uh, cube files. So what I'm gonna do first while I'm, while I'm showing you this is that I can go into the menu real quick and tell the OSD to stay on for much longer than 30 seconds. That way you can see uh, what I'm trying to show you. So I'll just turn the duration off and then the menu will just stay up as long as I want it to. So I'm gonna go back to the 3D config and so you have several options there. You have either store from USB or USB looks. So if I go to USB looks, so you get the, the two uh, before and after shots, go into the USB stick, there we go. So I have a folder in there called 3D LUT pack. So I'm gonna go in there and look for one specific one that I really like with this footage. That's under Sony S-Log. And actually this footage was shot on a Sony camera. So my custom LUT. So that loads up. And then you're gonna see the monitor just changed. So you see the before and after. So I double clicked it and what that does, it also loads it into the monitor, the memory of the monitor. So after I load up my favorites, I don't need the USB drive anymore. I can just load up the ones I use the most and then I don't have to worry about having a USB stick sticking out of the monitor. So I'll load that one up as well. And maybe that one. And then I'll go ahead and exit. So you saw me actually load up some, some, some LUTs to the monitor. So once I exit, I'm gonna go back to the menu, to the LUT config. And now when I go into store from USB, you're gonna see a list. So those are the three that I just loaded up. The last one is selected, but I'm gonna do my custom LUT and then you're gonna see that one uh, get applied. So that's pretty much how the 3D LUT system works on this monitor. It's really cool. Anything you apply to it, it's also gonna get uh, looped out through the SDI as well. So, Another cool feature that I'm gonna show you now is our waveform system. So we have really nice, really uh, responsive, really high resolution waveform vector scope RGB parade on this monitor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the function setup and this is where I can set the features that I want mapped to any of these function buttons. So I'm gonna go in ahead and map one of them to waveform and actually uh, function four is already mapped to waveform. So what I'm gonna do is hit function four and there you go. You can see that I, the first option I get is full screen waveform. If I press it again, it'll toggle to the quad where I get waveform, RGB parade, and vector scope plus a little you know, preview of the image as well. And then this is all of them. So it shows you all the kind of scopes and, and, and uh, waveform and, and everything the monitor is capable of. So I have the uh, audio meters. You don't see anything moving there because this video has no audio. The uh, Luma histogram, the RGB histogram, the RGB parade, vector scope, waveform, everything on one screen. So then I hit it again and it just shows me one in the corner. So what I'm gonna show you real quick is that that's sort of the basic options that you have right there, but if I hold the function button for three seconds, it goes into a sub-menu, which gives me more options. So from the sub-menu, I can actually, I don't have to click through all the ones, I can specifically choose which one I want. So under waveform, I can go in there if I want the all types, the four screen, or whatever I want. Now a really cool and unique feature for this monitor is that it allows me to decide whether I want to output the waveform display to a secondary monitor. So what I did to, to kind of show this off is that I have it hooked up here to one of our other monitors, the Atlas AX20. So as you can see there right now, it's just looping out the SDI because I don't have that mode enabled. So what I'm gonna do real quick is go to the SDI waveform mode and change it from on screen to output. So as you can see now, I get the waveforms full screen on a secondary monitor. That is really, really cool because it allows you to see the image full screen on the SX7 and get a really nice clear image of the scopes on a secondary monitor. It could be something as big as this, so you can get a really clear image of what your scopes are reading. So that's a really cool, really unique feature that the Saga SX7 has. This monitor is also equipped with all the other features and all the other bells and whistles that a lot of the ICANN monitors have as well. So I'm going to go through just quickly through those so you can see what features are available. I'm going to go back to the function setup menu and go to function one. So you can see there it has check field, HV delay, guides, 
uh, the crosshair, the grids, peaking, false color, zebra, underscan, and then uh, waveform, zooming, audio meters, you can turn them off and on, and also HDR preview. So what's cool also about the Saga monitor is that it has the HDR preview mode, which helps you while you're in production get a better idea of what the footage that you're recording in will look on a proper HDR television. So if I press function one, which is what the HDR preview was mapped to, it takes away the LUT, and then I press the F1 button for three seconds to get into the options. So right now HDR preview is on. Uh, the HDR range allows me to crank up or lower the brightness of the HDR image. And then below that, I have the log format. So right now it's Sony S-Log3. I can go through the area ones and all these are preloaded. But I'm gonna keep it on the Sony one because I know that this is what this footage was shot in. And then I can also select the gamut, the Sony Gamma, so we got all the different gammas. So this is the Saga SX7. It's super durable, super bright, a great value for all the features that are packed in this. But speaking of super bright, the monitor during this whole video is actually on a low brightness. So what I'm gonna do now is go into the menu and show you the different levels. We give you the option of going low, middle, high, and also the option of turning on and off the fan because this is 2000 nits. It's very, very bright. The LCD panel gets hot, so we had to cool it down. So it's got two little fans in here, but sometimes you're in a situation in a studio or something where you don't need your full brightness, but you need absolute silence, you can go in there and turn that off. So real quick, going into the video config options, going into the backlight, right now it's in low. So what I'm gonna do is show you the difference. So right now it's low, that's middle, and that's high. So it gets insanely, insanely bright. I'm gonna go put it back to low, and then I'm gonna show you that you can also control the fan by going into the system config menu, and then that turns them off. So I don't recommend turning them off if you're in the high bright settings, but if in your low, it's okay. Um, just because you know the, the, the panel does get really hot. It's a, it's a high bright panel, it's 2000 nits. So the Saga SX7, part of the Saga line, if you need any more information on this or any one of our monitors, this is the AX20, please visit iCanCorp.com. My name is Dario Resendez, and this has been iCan's Tech Corner. Thank you for watching.